Content warning. Death House is a gothic horror adventure with a very heavy emphasis on gothic and horror. The triggers for Death House are mainly cult activity, human sacrifice, ritual suffering, and childhood tragedy. Though it is important to remember that gothic horror has things that naturally fall under this category that aren't mentioned explicitly in this content warning. If any of this will upset you in any way, your health is far greater than watching streamers play D&D. Be safe, be happy, be adventurous, and enjoy. I got so many notes. <laughs> so, I think your world is yeah. crumbling around you right now mm -hmm. into dust and rot and ash. What are you going to do? Um, he's gonna look and see if anything other than the books is crumbling. Like, in the, um, the dike, cause he's, he's, that dining room seem is gonna stick with him for a hot minute, uh, and he wants to see if the same thing is happening here, or if it's just the books. Uh, like, throughout the library itself? Yeah. It is just the books. That somehow makes him more upset. Mm -hmm. Is the um, box still intact? Like that uh, I took. What's up? Is the tinderbox that I took still intact? Yeah, tinderbox still fine. It's just all the books. Oh, fuck that. Uh, can I do an arcana check? Is it worth it? Yes, good. Uh, 17. There is something wrong. But you know oh, that. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> I then, um... Knowledge in all its spectacular glory is the one thing I feel that you feel is infallible. Mm -hmm. Whenever everything goes away, whenever there are not but the crustaceans that once roamed the earth that now have taken over and uh, that's all that there is. Just air, sea, land, and the few things that have managed to survive knowledge will outlive all of that right yeah no he's um ethan thinks that knowledge comes before everything and he thinks that so long as he knows things uh everything else can be solved um which is why the library was like a godsend and it's it's the books are gone now how then do you feel with the one thing that you've had to anchor yourself onto for as long as you've lived, which by human standards is quite a long time. How do you feel? But to you, it's just a short amount. Um, now that the one thing that you've had to cling on to is nothing but dirt and ash at your feet. Uh, if I'm, like, literally cannot process that this is, like, a real thing. Mm -hmm. Um, from the very beginning, when Ashka was spit out by the fog, something in his mind was like, this is... this is not correct. Um, and right now, he's sitting in this place... I can't figure out anything. Uh, he's like, the only thing I've ever been able to do is figure things out. And like, he doesn't have common sense. But like somebody could give him a few a few like things that have happened in the scenario, and he could figure out. The he can't do that now, and he doesn't know what to do with that. He feels useless. I like, think that's the. What is more real than losing something that you love? Ow. What were you gonna say, Esther? Ow. Um, I was gonna ask, out, out of character. Does Mutt remember what? Oh, as well as Ethan remember what he read before it turned to dust. I don't know. Can I, you, uh, I, I asked. Can I make a uh, check for that? I will say in the future, um, don't try and police actions like that. Oh, yeah. Right, um, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, you didn't know. It's totally fine. Um, I will give you this one, though. Uh, Ethan can check. What check am I making for that? Um, I'll give you a history and I'll give you advantage because it literally just happened. <gasps> that is okay. That's a very good roll. I don't think I can get better than that. Yeah, that's a twenty-five. 
So you oh, read shit. the you read the oh, name. Oh no, it's, it's a twenty-three. Sorry. Nonetheless, uh, you read the name Durst. D U R S T. I get to write that down. Sick. Thank you. Hoggers. Is that is that all I pull from that? Which honestly is more than enough, given that it turned. Else. Yeah, um, I, I would say yeah. That's about that's about it. Um, you do you will say uh, I will say uh, there was an insignia next to it, uh, and it was a windmill. Oh, I fucking hate windmill. No. Okay, sick. Um, Durst, and that's for the U. Not that the spelling matters. D U R S T. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Right. Um, if if that is ready to leave, he doesn't want to be here anymore. Um. All right. Uh. So I assume that from here it just might be a straightforward going up, or. Um. As they're leaving the the library, Ashka doesn't say anything, but she does sort of give a comforting like pat on the shoulder. Uh, Ethan barely acknowledges it. She's she's not even gonna acknowledge the other room. She's already just heading up. And he is, following. yeah, he's he's following. He's like done with this. All right, you're going up on the balcony. <laughs> is this the third floor? This is the third floor. Hold on, give me just a second. I wanna I wanna see. I want to see if I can't do something real quick. Um. Is that. That's number nine, real quick. Okay. Um. Out of curiosity, you are immediately going? Yeah. Hmm. Uh. Because there was another I room. I still have my shield out. Um, I so I, Ethan specifically, this is not me trying to lure you into your doom. Although I know as a DM, I do naturally sound suspicious. Um, when the DM is sus, I want to say you've got a little bit of a drive. You you do feel like everything is lost, but there's something sort of like nagging you in the back of your head. Like this can't be it. Um, like, yes, you've lost all hope, but maybe there is one more thing that you can do. Mm. And it is in the library. Have I perception checked the library? You have not. Can I do that? Absolutely. Go ahead and give me a wisdom perception. Nat 20. Wonderful. Holy shit. As if a, a large spotlight has appeared... Um, in fact, it is, um, it is the one book that's still sort of standing. It looks to be a fake book. Um, and, uh, like, everyone, it, to be fair, if it was a snake, it would have bitten you. But at the same time, everyone, everything just happened at once. Um, but you sort of go to it and then you, you prop it open. Uh, you sort of, like, uh, uh, you, you remove the book. Um, and a secret door, uh, springs from, uh, in the hinges <laughs> and opens. Oh, I love these bitches. Um, so you walk in, um, and this secret room has bookshelves packed with tomes describing, um, in fact, it's just, it's, I'll say right now, it is packed with bookshelves. Um, you take it in. You, I, I will say, um, with your previous Arcana check, um, they would have gone with the other books. Had mm. they, had, had they had been completely, you know, uh, like, decimated. It's the rest of the Midnight series. <laughs> I have some great- I, I will say, uh, in- in sort of packed in a, in a secret corner is the rest of the Midnight series. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, first of all, need you to know, nearly cried in real life, still looking at my nat 20 dice. This is- this is- this is oh, fucking spectacular. Um, okay. Uh, and how big is the room? Um, 
it is uh, smaller in comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, considering that the, uh, that this is a secret room, um, I would say, let's, let's give, let's give you an approximation here. Um, the secret room is about, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, like one twelfth of how big the, uh, the small, or the, uh, the library was. It is, it is much smaller in comparison. Okay. Um, and it is just like small room, well, s- small, quote unquote, with books. Walt, can I take closer looks at the books and see if there is any specific thing that is tying them together? Like any reason that all of these books have been saved? Uh, give me Walt's an book. Arcana check. Can I just look at the books to see if anything's off? Um, you also can do that as well. Give me an Arcana check. Um, you just barely make it, uh, Ivan. Oh, thanks. So, God. The... yeah, I got a four. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this is kind of over your head. Um, yeah. But you, Ethan, um, you, uh, the bookshelves are packed with tomes describing a fiend summoning ritual um, and necromantic rituals of a cult called oh. the Priest of Auspice. But you read it and you look really confused because you're like, I've never heard of this before. Um, and after, after some studying, um, after looking and, and going through your own tomes, uh, it looks completely bogus. Um, oh. like, almost entirely. Uh, however, um, Ashka, you're reading it and you're like, holy shit. Oh my god, we have to get rid of it. We have to, get, we have to, what the fuck? I, I will say, as I'm reading, because it's fiend summoning, is there any, like, infernal stuff that I could read? Because I do know infernal. Um, yeah, some of the stuff isn't infernal. Um, not much, uh, but not enough. Much. Hmm, I wonder how you can read fucking infernal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, just for um, those of you who are not currently reading books like nerds, um, there's a heavy wooden <laughs> chest. With clawed iron feet, and it stands against the south wall. Its lid half closed. Um, and you then say sticking half closed. Is that opened? Half closed. Half. I don't opened. know. I'm, I'm a lid is, half is closed. Is it? Yeah. Kind is, of are, guy. are you? Are you a lid half closed or lid half open kind of guy? <laughs> oh shit. Um. But yeah, there is uh, sticking out of the chest is a skeleton in leather armor. Oh, like Do a I have human skeleton. Now? What? What was that? Ash- or Ashka. Uh, what was that? Esther. Esther? Am I wearing any armor now? I don't think you are. I don't know. You- <laughs> You had- well, You made this Uh- Is this, um, armor proficiencies light medium shields? So, you do not have armor. I think that we agreed, uh, because you are a lower class. Your AC is 16, uh, but you don't have any armor on. Would it be frowned upon if I stole the leather armor from the skeleton in the chest? You can certainly try. Oh. I I go to, to wait, steal. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Ashka, does Ashka notice? Sorry, oh Esther, God. Esther, your AC is 13, not 16. So yeah, that, it, it might help you. It might help you a little bit. Yeah, I go to move to steal the armor. Uh, would I, would I notice or am I that and, and, like, you are this, actively this looking, so I'm going to give you, uh, what is your passive perception? 16. I will have you roll, uh, perception at disadvantage in that case. How is your passive oh. perception better than mine? Oh, wait, I, I just, eyes. yeah, because I'm stupid. Yeah, sorry, continue. Right, uh, <laughs> that is... Right. That is going to be a 19. Oh my god, with disadvantage? With disadvantage? Uh, first roll was an 18 plus 6, second roll was a 13 plus 6. Fucking hell, yeah, I know you Whoa. know this. Well, actually, no. I'll say, uh, are you actively, Esther, are you actively trying to be stealthy? No, I, I'm just walking over <laughs> Okay, well then never mind. The yeah, no, you notice. <laughs> uh, Ashka instantly is like, wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? I, I don't have any armor. I'm, there's armor here. Why would I not take it? Um, can Ethan One. overhear this? Um, yeah. I, I mean, Ashka's not being quiet. 
Uh, Ethan is- uh, the book is still open in his hand, he's got his thumb in the pages between it. Looks very scholarly, his tiny little glasses- His big, like, uh, cowish nose, and he, like, looks over. And he looks at the skeleton hanging out of the chest. With the armor on. And he looks at Esther, and he's like, Please take a moment to take in the situation. Can he vibe check it? Actually, I wanted to cast a spell. Oh, please. Good. Please. Um, I have gentle repose. Okay. Uh, you push a corpse or other remains. For the duration, the target is protected from decay and cannot become undead. Cool. Yeah. Um, the, the spell also effectively extends the time limit on raising the target from the dead since days spent on yada yada. Yep. Can't, can't be undead. Uh, you can absolutely, you can absolutely, uh, cast into repose, yes. Oh my god, what a play! Yeah, so, um, Asuka sort of, like, like, with the handful of ash on her, uh, just sort of, like, makes a holy symbol on the head of the skeleton as she casts a spell, like, mumbling a prayer. Um, Um, and then she takes a step back. Yeah, and whenever you, whenever you are casting gentle repose, by the way, Um, You recognize, as you get sort of closer, um, there are three dots that were, or darts that are lodged into the armor and ribcage of the skeleton. Is it human, or is it humanoid? It is human. Oh. It's humanoid. I mean, it's it's a skeleton of a a non-beast creature. Um, Humanoid. uh, So it was sentient. It was sentient. Yeah. Um, oh. given, given the information that you know, it looked like uh, an adventurer tried to open up the, uh, open up the chest and it triggered, uh, a dart trap. H- although the good news is if there was a dart trap there, it no longer remains. Uh, Ethan does not care. Yeah. Fair and enough. immediately like grabs Esther and it's like, absolutely fucking not. And almost like pushes her out of the door. Like, has no, no interest in Esther being in this room anymore. I will, say, like, I will no. say, uh, the person who recognized this was Ashka, not Ethan. Oh. Fuck! Who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and landlines have now become canon to Curse of Strahd! <laughs> Twilight! Landlines! What next? Actually, it's midnight, thanks. Um, no, sorry. Um, and it's... Uh, is the werewolf's name? It, what's the what? Is the werewolf's name Snakehub? Uh, actually, uh, no, it's it's Yahub. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm sure. And uh, Edward. Uh, oh. Edward. We... God fucking. Damn. Wow. Uh, what about the uh, what about the human girl? Um, Jella. <laughs> Jesus Write this down! Write this down! Get this in your notes! This, this is canon! canon. <laughs> this is canon! This is canon! Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, um, I'm Team Edward. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, need, you'll need something to, to, to sort of occupy that feeble mind whenever you get out of this house. Oh my god! <laughs> Educate yourself! Maybe fucking read some, some Midnight, god damn it. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Just to um, let you all know, uh, Jella was my gay awakening. Um, yeah. I'm hmm. so happy for you. Thanks. Canonically? Canonically. <laughs> well, canonically. Canonically, if that is a straight guy, he's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, alright, so, um... Ashka yeah. was the it one that found of that the dark mechanism. So it's, it's Ashka. Yeah. So, so was it, was you, it just, Ashka. like... Connected to it, like, is there like a visible so? Trip yeah, what what I what I had said is the good news is three darts are in the armor and rib cage, which means that the darts that would have been fired have already been fired long ago. Um, the wire has already been tripped. Upon closer examination, uh, it just seems that this poor uh, previous adventurer was the one that got the worst of it. Right. So, um. She's gonna actually motion for Esther to come closer now, and she's gonna be like, "I believe it's safe. If I am wrong, I could deal with the consequences." Well, uh, 
like with everything in this house that we've seen so far, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to melt off my body? That's fine. I don't Turn think to dust. that's... I'll be alright. I, well, I, I don't think that that's fine. I, uh, actually, I think that if you turn to dust... You might not be all right. I think that's the opposite of all right. I've walked into this house with no armor. I don't see why I can't continue. Either I get the armor or I don't. It also, if this is someone who is from outside the house, I don't think that it would react like stuff that's been in the house has been reacting. I mean, that just makes sense, right? Hmm. Makes it sense to me. Back to, uh, he glances at his book, uh, but he he. he doesn't do it for too long. He, like, looks back to the two of them um, pretty soon after. Yeah, uh, and, and... You know the really funny thing about this is, by the way, Esther, uh, I, I will say you do get the, the armor. Um, okay. Your AC does not change one bit. Oh, for <laughs> Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it has is, it, a... is it magical to any capacity? No. Or is it's it... just no, fucking it's leather, just leather, leather armor. armor. Basically just put on it. It's not a that. But, 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 really... but, but there is something inside the chest and Ooh. there is something that is clutched within the skeleton's hand and it's a letter. Oh, I don't I like letters. I've had enough of letters. I unfold the letter and immediately hand it to Ash. Girl, I'm not reading it. A letter is, yeah, that's because you can't read. Yeah, um, it's not reading it. It just motions, motions for Esther to check the chest. Um, mm-hmm. so... You guys got treasure. Um, oh, yo! So you guys get three blank books with black leather covers. Three spell scrolls, which are bless, <gasps> protection from poison, and spiritual weapon. The deed to the house. Oh my god! The deed to now? a windmill. And oh, a signed no. will. Who's, who's it signed by? Gustav and Elizabeth Durst. And That's the name that I saw in the book. And it bequeaths the house, the windmill, and the all other family pop- property to Rosvalda and Thornbolt Durst. Oh, in so the those event kids of their parents' deaths, deaths. What? What? Uh, what were the spells? Uh, bless, protection from poison, and spiritual weapon. Uh, spiritual does... weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, baby, that was what I was looking at. I was like, no, I don't know if I want it yet. Cool. Huh. Um, does, um, did you want to? Did you want to go ahead and uh, read the letter? Yes. The letter reads: <clears throat> "My most pathetic servant, I am not a messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I have not come to lead you on a path to immortality." However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, however many visitors you have tortured in your dungeon, know that you are not the ones who brought me to this beautiful land. You are but worms writhing in my earth. You say that you are cursed, your fortune spent, you abandoned, you abandoned love for madness, took solace in the bosom of another woman, and sired a stillborn son, cursed by darkness, of that I have no doubt. Save you from your wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are. Your dread lord and master, Strahd von Zarevich. <gasps> it's the big bad bitch! Well, I canonically don't know that, but I do out of canon. <gasps> okay, first of all, newborn, like, is this addressed to Durst? It is. You, you have no idea who it's addressed to. Oh fuck! I, is there any like date on this letter? Nope. Are you fucking what about oh, seal? So... yeah, seal. Uh, the seal. Windmills. I'm very glad that you asked. Actually, the seal is actually not the windmill. It <gasps> is. Let me let me actually let me me- double check what the seal looks like. <sighs> Hey guys, that's the big bad bitch. So the wax is seal bitch. is of what looks to be um, a a castle 
a, 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 a like a tower castle and then a raven right in front of it with uh, ring, wings spread out, splayed on either side. Mid-flight. This is fucked oh, up. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> so it's... Yeah, I, I was um, gonna read some of the letter, and she, she reads it over once, and then she reads it aloud so the others could hear it as well. Um... And, uh, then, and then she just grimaces. Can I, uh... I think I was gonna turn to Ashka and ask, uh, for for the letter, so he can touch it. Yeah, yeah. she hands it over. It is very uh, real. Can I detect magic on it? I have Absolutely. detect magic as a fur ball. It's a natural. Uh, that's what I've learned today. It's natural genetic yeah. trait for a fur ball. Oh wow, nice. So, yeah, so I get detect magic. Oh, you go ahead I and detect wish that I... fucking magic. Um, cool. I oh, I don't need to roll for it, do I? You don't. Yeah. Uh, you detect it. Um, it is a parchment. And it, it was written on with ink. Oh. Tis not magical in uh, any oh, sense of the word. Um. Would you say that there, uh, you know, I know, I know, I know, technically. Would you say that there is any point in me investing, like, on a deeper level? DM to play or no. Cool. Okay. Um, all you've you've got everything that you need. I sick. Say. Um, so I am gonna, and so the people that were mentioned were like it was like people right, and it was like your love affair and like a cursed newborn, like stillborn son. So what he said is, you say that you are cursed, your fortune spent, you abandoned love for madness, took solace in the bosom of another woman, and sired a stillborn son. Cursed by darkness, of that I have no doubt. Save fa save you from your wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are. First of all, what a fucking Chad move. Um, <laughs> I don't think Strahd's a Chad. I, I, really, I really do not think he th he's a Chad. I think he thinks he's a Chad. I think he thinks he's a nice um, guy. <laughs> um, the bit the about, baby. like, a newborn son that's stillborn. Mm -hmm. Given, you know, all the baby imagery in this house, mm -hmm. I'm not liking that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. And I'm not enjoying... Oh, and... Uh, has Ashka shared with us that... Uh, yeah, Ashka read the letter out loud. But the grimace on the woman's face downstairs towards the baby. Do we know about that, or has Ashka kept it to herself? She, she's gonna mumble, like... I... This could be to the homeowners. Ethan thinks the same thing. Um, Ethan like gives a nod and he's like, "There's uh, something." Elizabeth, yeah, the woman. There's something very wrong here. Um, and if that oh. baby. Oh no! Oh no! A um, child would be a newborn, right? Young. A yeah, a baby. Why haven't we heard a cry? Um, Ethan has had that thought somewhere in the back of his head, but hasn't acted on it or th really pulled it to the forefront. Uh, but there's like a there's like a knowing look between the two of them now, and he like glances around the room. Uh, have I pers what room are we in right now? Um, right now uh, we're in that secret room. Secret aren't we? room right off the uh, cool. the side of the library. Library was the word okay. that I was looking for. Um He is going to look to Ashka and be like something is very very wrong and I almost feel as though it's not the monster that's the problem, it's everything else. She looks at the tinderbox she had. Sorry, keep going. I fucking oh, hate that. Um, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Why are so many dice being rolled? What is happening here? <laughs> Pay no attention to the DM clearly rolling to be yeah, loud. The DM yeah, going. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Hold on, guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll be a little bit more quiet. Hold on. Ah, fuck. Um, it sounds like we're inside the dice now. <laughs> <laughs> POV, you are the dice. <laughs> um, 
Ethan is also at this point where he's accepting they have to go upstairs. Like, he knows... If anything, he's more comfortable with the fact that everybody else is now terrified, too. Um, <laughs> Great. Because before, beforehand, he genuinely felt like the only person who was like, There's something wrong with that fucking baby! And I can't explain why, but, you know, skulls pointing toward baby floor. Not good. Uh, baby and now floor. he's... He is- he's taking solace in the fact that Ashka is also seeming to realize that, like, there's something here. Uh, he thinks that they're all better off, you know, as a group wary than he is trying to protect them just by watching everything. Uh, but he also accepts that, like, right now, they- they they have to go up there. Um, they don't have a choice anymore. Um, because if they go outside, they're just gonna get spat back out at the front of the house. And then what? Excellent. So, Hate that. are we going up the stairs to the, th the third floor? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, has, has, um, real quick, has uh, the lantern only been what's been lighting up the way for us? Yes. Uh, yeah, Ashku got into shit, just got real mode. She's gonna cast the light. Okay. Um, was just, it worth just mentioning... a cantrip. Oh, yeah, okay, continue. Sorry. Go. Um, was it worth mentioning this entire time a fallen Asimars have uh, dark vision? I didn't want to say that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I have zero foot of dark vision. You're just out here dark vision as well. shrimp vision in the middle of the night. You're just like, you yeah, see yeah, shrimp colors. Like, I was like, by the way, this colors. entire time I've just been able to see clear as day. If that is the only yeah. one who needs this light, you guys are like, you guys are just. Guys, I need you to give me three sec. Like, I know you don't need the oil lamp. I do. Fucking chill, right? <laughs> so sorry. Um, Ashka just likes the light. Oh, that's nice. So, that's quite sweet. <laughs> um, I I take it you are headed up the stairs. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I, I'm not happy about it, but where yeah. as? Okay, first of all, Ashka. Um, I'm gonna ask you for a little bit of flavor here. Whenever you cast light, what does it look like? Um, oh. so, it's, so it's that same sort of ash in, in a symbol that, uh, that's been well practiced onto her shield, uh, but with gentle repros, uh, nothing much happened, it was just sort of like a gentle, like, like, motion. Um, this time the ash, like, almost like, like, burns, like, it, it comes alive with, like, fire. Um, and then it's just this sh just sort of warm glow that lights away from her shield. So, um, what happens is you, you get the ash, you put it on your finger, you sort of, like, very carefully and methodically, uh, draw that symbol, and almost immediately it sparks to life. And there is a, a big roaring flame, and then it immediately dissolves, and what's left is that gentle, warm, orange, almost, like, fluorescent orange glow as you are walking up the stairs. You can sort of hear, like, the gentle creak, and as you are traveling up the stairs you notice that things are starting to get more and more dirty and more weathered and aged and where whenever you get to the third floor whereas the first two floors were almost immaculate the third one is rot and not mm. kept well at all it is it is whereas your first couple of floors ashka were your wildest dreams this is your biggest nightmare it is it is not pleasant to look at um uh, so you're on the third floor. Uh, you are currently in the uh, on the balcony. Um, mm. So it's it's a dusty. It's very dusty. Um, there is a suit of black plate armor standing against one wall, and it's draped in cobwebs. Mm. Uh, so so first of all, uh, I thought I was gonna look, glance at Esther and be like, oh, I suppose it wasn't the baby uh, doing the uh, the cleaning. Noted. Uh, if it can't keep its its floor clean, um, don't know how it's doing the rest of the house. Uh, is this a good time for Ethan to bring out his big stick? Um, it's up to you. I think I want him to have his freezing. big stick. I'm sorry, freezing. <laughs> oh wait, shit! I'm gonna get God. a monster manual, not my DMG. Hold on. He got a big stick, baby. <laughs> I mean, there would be more appropriate times to bring out a ah, stick. We're on the baby floor! <laughs> okay. I hated that sentence, actually. I'm putting that one back in my brain. Um, <laughs> Alright. So. 
Let Wait. me double check that I have. Okay, night page nineteen. Wait, you said monster manual? Uh, no, I didn't. Anyway, um, <laughs> um anyway, where are we going? Hey, hey here. Uh, I'm taking out my big stick. I'm fucking sick of it. Um. So, uh, this is my, like, fun special stick. Yep, this I'm is really your fun special stick. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about it. Would you like to describe what exactly happens whenever you get out your big stick? Uh, yes. Does it start off I big? absolutely <laughs> would. No, it doesn't. It starts off really small, actually. <laughs> uh, so I'll set the scene. Um, the three crest the stairs and, and Ethan looks at the room. Uh, actually, can I do, like, a vibe check? Like, just to see if he gets bad vibes. Um, whenever you say vibe check, are you looking for, are you doing regular perception, are you doing investigation, or are you doing arcana? Uh, I want to say arcana, I think he's probably okay. check. Uh, cause I think that, that also just sort of tells you something off, Wonderful. even if it's magical. Uh, that's gonna be a dirty 20. So, your, your arcana check manages, like, you sort of, like, see things that other people can't really see whenever you are sort of tapped in uh things that you've learned from page that translate onto um to real life and you see a string sort of connecting you running along the 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 the, uh the floor and then it leads up to the armor the armor specifically me it it is it is you can tell that the armor is magical in the moment that you realize it jumps into action it springs up to life and i want everyone to roll initiative oh Oh, okay oh oh, fuck the big stick's coming out can i take my big stick out before this happens you can you can take your big stick out before it happens okay um uh ethan ethan upon getting this you know he first notices this like connection and the moment that he recognizes it he goes into his satchel, he unpacks it as quickly as he can, and he draws out what looks as though it is just like a standard, almost like a wooden dowel that's been fashioned from like a dark sort of, uh, it's like wood that's been stained. And he taps it on the ground, and as he does, it like pops and becomes a great uh, eight foot staff. Um, there's leather bound around the center where his hand goes on the top. Uh, wound, it's, there's like twigs that come up to crest except they're stiff and they are holding uh, like a solid piece of crystal. It's not like an arcane focus crystal it's just like a weight. Um, oh, fuck! And it's, it's bound at the top um, with twig and leather and as he stands, he like sits it on the ground beside him and it's taller than he is. It's almost eight foot tall. Um, and then he watches this suit of armor leap into action and i'm gonna roll for initiative i got a 12 i got a 16 oh it's really bad i got a two oh no (laughs) plus what plus what oh one second let me oh wait wait, what do you add what do you add to uh initiative initiative (laughs) yeah that would make sense yeah, your That's initiative, so uh, if you, it's your dexterity modifier, um, plus whatever modifiers oh, it's, you so get from it's... your class rates or other features. Um, plus oh. one, that's, uh, I think, so if I yeah. rolled a 16, so it's three. And I, have a, uh, I rolled a 16, and I got a plus one initiative and a plus one dexterity, is that? If your initiative is just plus one, you have just that. Okay, yeah, cool. Then it's 17. Three. It's three. Okay. It's three. So, we've got Esther, who's uh, getting the front with a 17, yeah? Holy shit, yeah. <laughs> uh, what did Ashka get? 12. Okay, so it's Esther, and then Armor, and then Ashka, and then Ithan. This is uh, a nightmare. Excellent. No. So, <laughs> uh, initiative has been rolled. Hmm. Esther. Hmm. Okay. There is a suit of animated armor, black animated armor, almost jet black, uh, like obsidian, um, in front of you. I love Minecraft. I love Minecraft. <laughs> uh, getting a bunch of Minecraft players together to play D anD D was the worst idea of my life. Is this Tekkit? <laughs> this is not <laughs> It's more. It's more mech and magic. Thanks, though. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. That is yeah. a thumbcraft bitch. Um. Like, le- legitimately, yeah? 
Yeah, literally. Uh, he comes from mech and magic craft. Let's fucking go. Okay. He's, uh, he's in school of transmutation. So we are uh, we are in initiative. Um, you have a a big thing of of armor in front of you uh, to attack. What do you do? Um. Okay, so. Cool. I don't know because I, I kind of want to use uh, rage, but I don't know if now would be appropriate. I don't know if we have more fights coming up. So for now, I'm kind of just swinging it with my great axe. Absolutely. Um. Uh, go ahead and roll uh, your attack. Um, so for you, do you need a little bit of help with this? Yes, please. So what you're going to do is you're going with your great axe. So what you're going to do is you're going to add, uh, you're going to roll a d20, and then you're going to add yep. your attack bonus, which is a five. Yeah. And tell me what that is. Uh, a d20 plus five. 24! That Ooh, hits. Nice. That hits. Uh, you, you uh, get up your great axe. You are right into battle mode. Like, you haven't really had a good idea of what's going on. You're just sort of like, you've sort of been like... Uh, 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 trailing behind, but the moment that this, like, weird-ass fucking animated armor springs to life, you go, oh, motherfucker, it's time, and you take your great <laughs> axe with almost, like, an impeccable ease, and then you dig it into the shoulder of the animated armor, and it goes shambling back. I want you to roll 1d12, please. A five. Um, and that's gonna be 1d12, so you got a five, you're gonna add three slashing, so that's gonna be eight. So you've taken eight, eight nice. damage off of this uh, this armor. Hell yeah. Thank you. I couldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and now it's the armor's turn. And unfortunately, no, Esther, you are the only thing that has uh, attacked it so far. So it is going to go for you. Um, what oh, it's yeah. going to do is it's going oh. to, um, and you get one attack. I wanted to make sure that you didn't have a multi-attack because I forget that all the time when never mind us. Okay, so let's see here. Ugh. Uh, does oh. a 22 hit you? Does it match your AC? Uh, motherfucker. My AC is 13, so <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, cool. Um... <laughs> Uh, this is how it feels. <laughs> I'm gonna die. They were right. I'm gonna die. Uh, you're gonna take I'm five going points of damage, to. please. Oh, that's not five too bad. Points. Okay. You've seen worse. Uh, I mean, that's 40. like that's like life or death for me. But <laughs> chip off the old block, huh? Um, mm. and it's going. What it does is it sort of it gets um. It's got, like, its hand, and it just immediately, with the other one that just been hit, it hits you immediately, and it's actually going to go, and I'm going to roll another one that does not hit you. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's a ten. Does not hit you. Um, so you're just gonna go ahead and take that, that damage. All right. Um, Five points. Okay. And, like, you can hear, like, a, a, a almost ghastly creak as it, like, swings its arm and hits Ooh. you. Um, but it, all things considered, it only really does, like, a little bit of damage. Um... So, that is the armor's turn. Ashka. Um, Ashka is immediately going to cast, a uh, Sacred Flame. Cool. Uh, cantrip, ba basically, uh, target must make a dexterity saving throw, or it will take 1d8 radiant damage. Uh, that is a 6 for the save, so... That is, that, that, that's... That does not save whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so, I roll... 1d8. Uh, that is going to be... I rolled the wrong dice. I rolled it the is, wrong dice. It I is all like, good. No worries. That is going to be a 6. Okay. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Alright. Ethan. Uh, would we describe this thing as a humanoid humanoid object or uh, a humanoid or an object? That's what I meant to say. It is a construct. Um, so mm. it is neither, unfortunately. Okay, let me see. Um, so I there I couldn't do person because that's for humanoids. Okay. 
Well, aren't, isn't it a humanoid, like, construct? Out of curiosity, what kind of damage, or what kind of, what kind of a spell is that? Is uh, it psychic? Second level enchantment. Enchantment. Um, I would say try something else. Fuck. Okay. Uh. <laughs> you know how I told you all he... This is where he's useless. No. Uh. He, uh, I, he's gonna, he's gonna lunge at him with quarter staff. That's all he can do. Yeah, go oh. ahead. Uh, make a quarter staff attack. A uh, quarter staff attack. Um, so that f is, uh, d20 plus four. Twelve. It does not hit. Fuck. Okay. Uh, oh, he suffers. <laughs> um, I don't think I have an additional attack, do I? You do not. Nope. Nope. Pog. I just, oh. We are back over to Esther. Is yelling at um, Ethan a... Uh, it is a free action. Free, free action. Okay. I see you run at him with the staff. And I immediately... I, I stick my hand out and I go... Um, what the hell do you think you're doing? I am trying not to get us killed! Just stand back. Just get back, all right? Stand behind me. Um, I'm gonna go back in and, and find my actual action. Um, I'm gonna bring my axe back out of this guy's shoulder if I haven't already done that. I'm gonna swing again. Yeah. Aiming at the chip. Well, not the chip. At, at the slash that I made um, yeah. before to try and get off his arm. Wonderful. Get his shoulder off. Yep. Uh, go ahead and roll for that. Is that another d20? Yep, it's another d20 plus your five. Well, that's a... That's an 11. <laughs> plus five? Plus five? That, that's with the five. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah, no. Uh, you, you, like, you're kind of uh, in shock from the animated armor kind of getting you before. And it takes, yeah. like, it takes a moment for you to sort of, like... Uh, get back into it, and then immediately, like, you sort of, like, shake your head, and then realize, oh, fuck, I gotta do something, and then you move, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Shit. Um, it is the armor's turn. Uh. Um, let me do another one. Okay, so... Okay, so it goes for, um, it doesn't actually go for you anymore, Esther, uh, especially considering that you just sort of, you missed. At the same time that you sort of go for it, it immediately sort of shambles around and it heads for Oshka instead. Um, and then the one with the hurt arm Im immediately misses, um, but the one with the second arm, um, you manage, uh, it, it manages to hit you. Um, and it's going to go ahead and get you for eight hit points of damage. Ugh. Sucks right. to suck. Oh man. Um, and I'm assuming this is all like, but like it's all within thirty feet of each other. Um, yeah, cool. yeah, you're all, you're all within close proximity. Um, it is uh, Ashka's turn. Um, all right, so. So Asha gets smacked with this, um, and she staggers back and then, uh, looks at the suit of armor, uh, with fucking fire in her eyes, basically, uh, and she's going to cast Burning Hands. Wonderful. Um, alright, so... As you hold your hands with some thumbs touching and fingers spread, sheet of flame sheet. I'm going to ignore the flavor text because I want to do it differently. Yeah. Um, so, uh, each creature within a 15 foot co cone must make a dexterity saving throw. And I assume uh, that Ethan and I Esther are on either side of you, so you're going to be doing it in front of you in that cone, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, going to make that dex save. That is a 17. Birth of save. Um, god, where the fuck is my spell... I don't see where it puts my spell shit. Um, give me a second. I can help you out. Um, 
Spells should be at the very last. You've got like little uh, little things. So you cast Burning Hands? Yes. Um, but I mean like, like it's a s- spell save. It's a spell save. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm 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 with you now. Um. So. Hold on, I have. This I uh, on a, on a failed save, I would take three d six, but I'll take half as much damage. So roll roll three d six and then take half of that, and then that's the damage that I will take. All right. Gotcha. I don't know what her spell save thing is. It's all good. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, your your spell uh, your DC is fourteen. Damn. Yeah. That sucks. Okay. I, I'm I'll explain it. to you all what DC means whenever we're done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's eight. It's going to be a four. Cool. Damage is damage. Mm. I like. If it's anything like, like me, it's gonna die. I like those these kind of um. Like, I like spells that, like, you take damage regardless, because at least, like, you're not being, like, you know, it's not, it's not like, I cast I something, it doesn't, yeah, and it doesn't do anything, and then now you don't have a spell slot, so. Um, okay, uh, Ashka, you are done. Ethan. Ethan, I'm Ethan. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lunge again with the core stuff. Go ahead. I'm going to ignore God. what uh, Esther said and it is go for the currently locked into combat with with Ashka, so I'm gonna give you advantage and on your roll. Poggers. I want you to get this dub so bad. Oh my god, that was the fucking that was nearly an at one. <coughs> uh that's gonna be twenty one. That hits Fuck thank fucking uh, god. And you were hitting you're hitting with your quarter staff? Yeah. Okay, so one D six plus two. One D six plus two. That's four damage. Uh, all in all? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Alright. And we are back to the beginning with Esther. Um. Okay, so is the suit of armor still in combat with Ashka? What's up? The suit of armor, is it still in combat It is with locked Ashka? in combat, yes. Locked in combat, okay. Um, how well is this armor held together? Like, could the pieces come apart relatively easily. I think it might be magical. It! Mm. You would have to roll- you would have to roll an investigation check, I think. What's Is that a investigation? Or? Um, that would not- I, I will- I will not make you take an action on this one. Okay, so if I roll an investigation, I can still attack yes. my Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, what is my investigation? Uh, zero, so that's uh, a... <laughs> I only rolled 12. It's fine, the DC was relatively low. It is held together by magic. Okay, shit. Um, <sighs> I'm gonna change my attack. Okay. Um, what is the eye, pl- like, what is the eye area like? Is it completely covered? It, it is, it is a... Construct, large fucking. It's it's like, it's steel. It's completely steel, and it covers every single inch of the body. Okay. Cause I was thinking if I could go for the javelin for the head. You can um, absolutely try if you want. I will absolutely try. That's what I'm going to think of. Since I've now failed with the axe once, I'm going to try and move on to the javelin. Okay. Um. All right. Is that just another D- D20 and then plus five? Uh, yeah, so uh, just just so you know for the future, uh, mm-hmm. your attack bonus is going to be what you add to whatever roll that you do to attack. So you see yeah. Javelin, and right next to it is attack bonus plus five. All of yours are plus five right now, so yeah. go ahead and just roll with that. 15 plus five, uh, D20. That's, that's dirty 20, wonderful. Yep, that hits. Nice. Uh, go ahead and roll that 1D6. Uh, where the fuck is the six? That's just a square one. It's disappeared. Hold on. <laughs> Fucking one. That's still four. You got plus three piercing. That's still a four. I hope hope this thing dies promptly. 
All right. We're working. So on what it. happens is you get out the javelin uh, and you sort of like hype yourself up, just sort of like bouncing on your toes, like okay, calm blue ocean, fucking, we're, we're going for it, we're going for it, we're going for it. Uh, it's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Um, I and the rock. You you reel back and then you immediately like go forward with your javelin and it pierces the back of the armor and the the head of the armor gets lo- dislodged from the body and sort of pins from the to the back of the wall however you see it almost immediately because it's the armor's turn instantaneously like magically like morph itself it's like almost magnetically go back up to its shoulders uh, makes like a sort of fuck kind of sound um and it turns very slowly oh, to shit. you esther and it immediately with both hands just tries to get you um that one so if you um, kill esther i would be so sad first hit is going to be 16 that hits that hits yeah uh second roll is going to be it's more than 16 so oh, fuck it's not, a, it's not a natural 20, um, but it is. it does hit. Um, so... Oh, man. I took a lot of big game. Um, <laughs> taking a lot of hits. Big game. For so someone. your your uh, oh, first your first damage that you're going to take is three. Ooh. Okay. And the second damage you're going to take is eight. Oh. All right. Cool. Uh, out of curiosity, um, you're at like three. 30, 31. 31. Out of 47. Cool. Thank you. You're still doing pretty good. Yeah, you're, you're still doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, and that's the armor's turn. Uh, the armor, the armor is now uh, locked into combat with Esther instead. Ashka, what's up? Um. So, I have a mace. I am going to try and use uh my mace and just like knock its head clean off its shoulders, basically. Mama's fucking pissed. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 15? Oh, Ashka. I will give you, I will give you with an advantage because it is locked into combat. I will not be doing this for the future, by the way, just so everyone knows. Yeah, no, it's gonna still be that 15. Oh, okay, well then fuck, fuck. you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you go fuck yourself. Sorry, Ashka. Fuck. My, 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 uh. Uh, my kindness, it seems, is not being welcomed by the universe. Um, mm. Ethan. Uh, Ethan, similarly to um, Ashka, is, uh, is, he doesn't right. care. He doesn't care. Ethan. Um, f- so first of all, can I, like, ask, see that string that I saw that connected? Mm-hmm. Um, was it, like, exclusively Ethan? Yes, uh, that was just me flavor texting your, uh, you do see that there is magic and it is linked directly to the animated armor. Okay, and I didn't get any sense of what kind of magic it was. Because it was not arcana. You, roll, you rolled a natural 20 for that one, right? I think it was a, mm, I don't think it was a nat 20, I think, I think it was like 16. I don't think. Um. So it was pretty high though, it was high enough. I will tell you, yeah, it's high enough. Um, the armor is animated magically, um, so you get the, uh, the inclination that if you had some sort of a dispel, um, then it could, uh, it it could be dispelled. Fantastic news. Um, I don't. Great. (laughs) Uh... I will oh. say uh, it seems slightly necromantic in nature. I hate that. Hate it. Uh, c- can I? Uh, how is he looking? Like, like, uh, just you know, uh, is he looking m- pretty beefy. He can't, or he can't he- look bloodied because he has no blood. However, mm-hmm. he is yeah, way yeah. past bloodied. Um, for those of you who are new to D anD D, bloodied is half damage. Uh, it's it's got half of its damage left, uh, or half of his oh. HP. Um, so, it is it is more than halfway done. Cool. Uh, Ethan cannot rage, but if Ethan could rage, he would. Um, it's like the instinct, like, like a mother who like sees the child yeah. under a, a yeah yeah I got it. Like he's he's just watched Ashka like fuck this up, and not it's not Ashka's fault. He knows that it's probably because like she's so fucking angry, 
and he is now furious. Yeah. So uh, I'm assuming that this this like fucker is still locked in combat with Esther. Yes. Um. And so Ethan is again gonna take the quarter staff, and is just gonna fucking swing to knock some body part, probably its head, off. Okay. Um. And am I getting advantage on that? Oh, it's cool. It's twenty two. Yeah. Um, go ahead. What are you rolling with? What, what, what are you uh, doing? I rolled a d20 for attack. Uh, with, with your quarterstaff? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and give me that 1d6 plus 2. 6. Ithan. How exactly <gasps> do you want to do this? Oh! Um, <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, so, um, he like... Ithan looks at Esther, uh, who, like, is supposed to be this, like, infallible fighter. Like, Ethan picked Esther up because she could fight, and that was the entire reason. Uh, and he is filled with rage uh, at the concept of anything hurting her more than it already has. And his chorus staff is, like, up, and he- it's a single hand object, but he's got it by two. Uh, treating it like a fucking baseball bat. And it goes, it knocks behind his head, and he swings dead on for the head of this animated suit of armor. Um, and goes to clock it with the, like, edge of this heavy-duty crystal that's been wound into the top. So it gets the full weight and, like, force of this hit. Holy shit. So oh you, God. with all of the conviction and strength of a man who has just lost everything that he felt was worth, like, all of the time that he had spent, who is fed the fuck up, just go, go for it with, with the, the widest, biggest, most pissed fucking swing <laughs> and like a fucking baseball bat, like a kid at T-ball. You just... <laughs> and the head immediately falls off and along with the head shambles down this entire plate of animated armor and that string that you see that has connected you to this armor that you see is magical immediately fizzles and dies in a plume of spark and smoke. And uh, we're out of initiative. Oh, oh man. Ethan is, if, if there was blood in this creature, Ethan would not care that he was covered in it. He is... The, the the staff is still in front of him and it, he's not holding onto the leather that he's to be it's like one hand on top one hand like halfway down and he is fucking furious uh and he looks at esther and like immediately this like sense of rage just sort of dissipates and uh the the, the bottom hand on the staff drops and it drops to his side and he puts out a hand um to try and pull her closer and away from just this pile of metal. Um, wordlessly. I take it. I fully just collapse into it, whatever embrace you're putting on right now. And he wraps his arms around her and just, like, hugs her for, like, a solid, Aww. like, few, like, a long fucking moment. Uh, and he's not angry anymore, he's just grateful that, like, First of all, Esther's not dead. Like, Ashka's fine. Ashka's always fine. Ashka, like, ragey, angry, whatever. But, like, Esther is so Ashka young. Took eight points of damage. Yeah, but, you know, uh, fucking Esther took 16, which is oh, Ethan's yeah, sure. whole health. Like, he would have died. Uh, and he's just like, we are going to leave as soon as we possibly can. And, like, finally lets go of her. And, uh, motions to just move for he like wants done with this he's oh, angry but he's fucking he's like he, he has a surge of confidence can can i just look over um look over esther like check injuries like like diana's just gonna ask like how are you feeling i didn't i didn't do my job <laughs> I was one set of armor. What, what did there's... what did I do? I'm gonna cry. Esther, there's times where you can't 
to your job to the full extent. It doesn't matter. You can. It's something it you'll matter. have to accept. I've already done that. This is not supposed to happen again. I'm here to protect you, and I can't even do that right. I'm fully about to burst into tears. So is Ethan. Um, <laughs> he has like this arm that is wrapped around Esther now, and he let go. Um, and he's he's it's it's like brotherly. Um, it's almost you know, not to compare it to to to, to like. Minor league baseball again, but also to be like, it's 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 like when uh when you know when you you know when this guy is on the pitch and they're like this guy he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna hit the big leagues he's gonna bat and he like misses a swing and his entire like team is like it's fine it's fine and he's he's like I'm gonna die like this is it this is the end um Ethan knows that like words aren't gonna fix this um there is. In, in the same way that he lost what he thought was, and still thinks was intrinsic to the world, and watched hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of words just melt away in front of him, he knows that something, uh, something in Esther, like a, about, like a, almost like a dog that was bound to protect and had based themselves in protection, is a little bit broken. And he just keeps his arm around her and pulls her closer. Um, and he goes, It's okay. Sometimes these things happen. Are you hurt? I... Esther falls silent and nods her head. She doesn't want to say out loud. She doesn't want to admit to the fact that, yes, she has taken quite a bit of damage. She doesn't want to be seen as as any more of a failure than she's already put out. So she just... (laughs) Falls silent and nods her head. Um, very quickly, I want to say. Yes, what's, what's up? First of all, incredible roleplay. Second of all, Esther, this is all happening while you have a top hat on your head. <laughs> 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 Can we wreck on the first time I got hit? The top hat went flying. <laughs> no, the top hat has been lowered. No, 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 no. the top hat has been lowered. <laughs> I made sure that the top hat is magically bound to your head. I cast oh. like a quiet enchantment under. Wait, do I have anything for that? Actually, one second. Let me check if I have anything. You do. It's called flavor. <laughs> no. Um, I, you know, just uh, who? I technically don't, but in my heart and soul, I have bound that top hat. I knew how attached you were to it when you got it, so I bound it to your head oh with my magic. Fucking god. Um, and I'm sure the DM will allow it, so... I, I nod my um, top hat <laughs> head in silence. <laughs> you honk your little your horn. Hat. <laughs> you got your midnight book, and you got tears in your eyes. <laughs> top hat on If head. we don't get midnight any other fan hand. art, if we don't get any other fan art from this session, I just want so badly for Esther to be in a top hat crying with fucking midnight, like... <laughs> Clutched under her arm. That's all I want as a DM. <laughs> um, but uh, I will say, um, Esther. You know what? All three of you take inspiration for that. That was really good. Oh, oh holy shit! You. Which one's inspiration? How much inspiration. Is that? Are um, so inspiration is actually um so. Let me, let me, let me actually, let me, um, let me explain what inspiration is. So what inspiration is, is, um, like something that I give to you as, as a GM, um, and you can expend it to make an attack roll, saving roll or ability check. Um, Mm -hmm. so spinning your inspiration gives you advantage on the roll. So you can keep it for however long, um, you can stack up to three inspirations for me. Um, Mm -hmm. and you're going to, um, like, anytime that you, like, really want to do something and you're getting really bad rolls, you can take that inspiration, you can use it, and you can roll it again. Cool. How much inspiration are we taking? Just one. One. Just one inspiration. Yeah. Just one. Uh, Alright. One! Ah, ah, ah. (laughs) (laughs) Very topical! Nice work! (laughs) That was Eddie. That was all Eddie. 
Yeah, I don't know much about Strahd, but if we ever get to meet him, can he just say ah 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 at least once? Yes, I will. I will make sure. He's like, how how nice to meet the three of you. Ah ah ah. One one adventurer, two adventurers, three adventurers. Ah ah ah. Hell yeah. We just went from angst to this. Um. Fuck. Okay. So I will say. uh Despite Esther's moral quandaries here and and how sad things are, you do have another duty to do. You have a you have a, yeah. a, a house to finish off. Mm-hmm. So, gotcha. um, where are you guys headed now? I will say right now you are on the balcony. I, real quick, Ashka is going to heal Esther. Um, yep. cure wounds. Go ahead. Uh, that's gonna be one. That's a penny. That's not a roll. <laughs> Heads or tails. <laughs> Oh, uh, heads. I'll let you pass. <laughs> You're allowed to heal me, there's, it's okay. There's no, there's no d20 roll for it. <laughs> you I'll can let heal. You pass. You can, I mean, you can heal a little. Okay, thanks. That's a treat. Um, so That's a treat. it's going to be 12 points. Cool. Hell yeah. Nice. I can't do basic maths. 43, there we go. Yeah, uh, do you have my max health? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, I mean, to be <laughs> fair, Esther's, Esther's max is, is 47. Oh. Yeah, that's fair. Barbarians, baby. They're big and beefy. Barbarians, baby. So, so like, uh, where, where can we... Oh, can you repeat that question again? Where can we go from here? Um, so, you can investigate the balcony, um, which I highly suggest. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, absolutely. If I've not investigated... Give me a perception. Um... Oh, it's bad. It's seven. I can roll. Is yeah, anyone else, else rolling a perception? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm begging you. I'm begging somebody else to Ash- roll. Ash goes reluctantly because, again, you described this as fucking awful. She's nauseous. She's not yeah. comfortable anymore. She she has this like part below like her uh, her like priestly collar that she could pull up over her face, like sort of a, a mask. Uh, social distance, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, she has a face. That's what the she mask is. <laughs> That's what the point um, of the mask is. But yeah, she uh, she rolls. Uh, she rolls. She, no. she gets she out her own rolls. dice <laughs> and she rolls on the ground. God. <laughs> uh, eighteen plus six. Wonderful. Twenty-four. Nice. You Jesus. find. A secret door that pushes open oh. easily to reveal a cobweb, <laughs> uh, a, a cobweb-ridden staircase um, leading up to what seems oh. to be an attic. Ah, uh, is the baby on this floor? The baby's on the third floor, right? I is think it we on? should go up anyway. Is it on the third floor? I, I think, um, I also think we should go up. I watched one of my best yeah. friends get very hurt today, and I am not ready to fuck around. Okay. Yeah, I'm over heading up. Can I, uh, go ahead with the dagger slashing out all the, uh, cobwebs? Getting them out of the way. Yeah, you can, you can slice them. Yeah, if, if, if you weren't doing that, I, w- I would have been casting fucking sacred flame on these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Just me and my dagger cutting through a path. Yep. Setting yep. shit on fire. Uh, you, yeah, you managed to make it up. Um, the attic hall is bare, but choked with dust and cobwebs. Um, in the attic, across, directly across, I believe? Yeah. Um, directly across, um, is, well, across and a little bit to the left. It doesn't matter. There's a, there's a little place. A um, little bit to the left. Yeah, yeah. You've got, um, um, there's a door in front of you, um, and it is locked. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the joke I made at the beginning? Yeah, I am remembering that. <laughs> do you want to do, do it? I think it would be funny. 
Can I make the lock really big so we can walk through it? You can cast- you can cast enlargen and you can walk through the lock if you want. <laughs> I think- I think it is very funny and therefore I will let it pass. Hell fucking yes! Okay, um, so, uh, so, uh, Ethan is like a- One fucking second, guys. I- I actually have this. Um, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, and he, he, you know, he, he, sh he shambles forward and um, reaches into his pocket, takes out a tiny pinch of sand, flicks it at the door, and as he does, it, like, puffs into, like, little blue sparks that weave and expand the fabric of this lock, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it is large enough for him to comfortably fit through if he ducks. So it's probably about six foot now. Uh, just, just a j fucking huge lock. Uh, and he like, at, with one hand out, like little blue sparks, uh, he like glances at the other two and he's like, you pop, through the door. There you go. Could have kicked the lock in, but that, this is also <laughs> fine. <laughs> I stepped through the, I stepped through the comedically large <laughs> Lock. <laughs> the other two have to duck a little. Ashka just goes through. <laughs> and then um, lets the other two go, and then he gives his little duck and pops through as well. <laughs> Great. Points for flavor. We'll give you that. Thank you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. This room that you've just walked into contains a bricked up window flanked by two dusty wood framed beds sized for children. Close to the door is a toy oh, chest no. with windmills painted on its side and a dollhouse oh, that's a perfect no. replica of the dreary uh, edifice in which you stand. These furnishings are draped in cobwebs and lying in the middle of the floor oh, are two small God. skeletons wearing tattered but familiar clothing. <gasps> no! The smaller Fuck. of the two cradles a stuffed doll that you recognize. Oh my fucking God! This is fucked up! That's a wee bit messed, isn't it? Now is when I'm going to, as a DM and also a streamer, give another um, another warning for content. For those of you who are just joining in, uh, cult activity, human sacrifice, ritual suffering, suffering, and childhood tragedy are all very big parts of Death House. If this deters you in any way, shape, or form, your health is much more important than a D&D stream that was given by three small streamers. Okay? <laughs> be careful, be safe, be happy, be adventurous, and if you want to stick around, go ahead. Just so everyone knows, this is the content that we're getting into. Thanks. I appreciate you. All right. Uh, Ethan, first of all, feels sick. Immediate sick. Uh, and, uh, I'm assuming that he, like, immediately recognizes the two kids outside. Yep. Um, and he is just like, fuck, uh, is there anything, I'm, I, can I, can I make a perception check and see if there's anything? Um, yep, you can. <laughs> Ten. Does anyone else want to roll a perception? I'm begging you. I'm begging I both can of you. Give it a shot, because I, I even with Esther's stupidity, I think she would recognize at least the the teddy bear. So. Okay. Go ahead. I got a four. Oh, okay. And my perception is actually a minus one, so yeah, it's a three. Right. Seventeen. Okay. Nice. So, um, Ashka, what I'll tell you right now is. Um, the toy chest, um, uh, contains an assortment of stuffed animals and toys, um, but you managed to look for at the dollhouse specifically. The dollhouse is a perfect replica, including all secret doors, um, that are within the place. Um, and what you see is, uh, you find all of the house secret doors, including one in the attic uh, that leads to a spiral staircase. This is horrifying. Uh, Where's the staircase lead? Um, let's see. Let me double check. Here. Um. Down. Oh. Uh. Is it worth making an Arcana check? Um.
Yeah. Cool. Oh my fucking god. It's a seven. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. no clue. Um, but I will say, uh, are you guys, like, sort of, like, obviously being respectful, but, like, looking through, like, sort of, uh, getting a good look at the, the dollhouse or the chest? Ashka's looking at the dollhouse, like, just looking for a nursery. She, she's trying her fucking best not to look at the kids, man. Um. Yeah, Ethan's the same. He's, like, really You know, dead it's actually skeleton. quite funny. Um, because you are actively trying not to look at the skeletons of these children. And from behind you, you hear a- <gasps> Why are you messing with my dollhouse? She instantly okay. turns around. Is it the skeleton saying that, or is it like a kid? Is it the kid? You see the ghastly specter. Now you recognize as a ghost of Rose and Thorn. Uh, the skeleton itself has uh, whipped away. It is It is gone. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh, no. I know this is a little bit of a fucked up reaction, but I put my hand on my axe. Yep. No, that's fair. No, fair enough. Those kids are fucking weird, man. <laughs> Ashka still glares. She's always going to. Um, Ethan, I think the best word for it is, like, repulsed. Um... This is, uh, I'm assuming that, like, again, this is not something that he recognizes from, from, from books he's read. Um, there's nothing here that links, I don't know, it, like, a history check making, right? What's up? I, like, a history check, or, like, I don't know, like, for something that he maybe recognizes. Is it? I don't know. Um... I think your best bet is to ask questions. Yeah, and- Okay. Are these kids- Maybe this- I don't think- I'm- I don't know if it's good to ask you as a, as a DM this, but are- are- do they seem like they're gonna fight? Or do they just seem like ghosts? They I will, are children! Yeah, I will tell you, they are children and they are ghosts of children. There is no ma malevolence here. Um, there's no malintent. Um, Okay. The only the only thing that you can pretty much ascertain is that if you were to try and harm them, then they will fight in defense. But they are if if they would have wanted to attack you, then they would have already. Okay, Ethan reaches out a hand and touches Esther's arm, um, as if to try and ease her. And as instead of like this like sickening like paranoia and nausea, he's sad. Like these kids are dead, um, and he can only assume that from what the books that he's managed to find and the stuff that he's managed to read that they have died as a result of other people's idiocy um and belief in something yeah. um and it, he he looks at them and he he's like a, is the monster still downstairs i wouldn't know You did earlier. No. That wasn't me. Outside? We can't leave here. Oh, no. So who was it outside? I don't know. So we've oh, never met? You? No. Your name's Rose, though. Who's asking? I I'm um, I'm, um, and Ashka uh, uh, she nods towards you, Ashka. Looks to Ethan. He sucks in a deep breath, uh, knowing it's probably not a good idea to give names. Understand, but Ashka's done it, so he's gonna do it to Ethan Omery. And then she looks to you. Esther, um, it, it should be noted, um, Thorn is once again doing what he was doing before. Kind of weeping mm. a little bit, scared. Very, very scared. I, but this poor fucking kid, man. I, um... Esther. 
You can call me Esther. She nods. And she goes. Mum and Dad locked us in the attic to protect us from the monsters in the basement. We got so hungry. Um. I thought it's... Yeah, Ethan is thinking thoughts. He's not saying this. Or a, a very, he's working very hard to control his. This point, there's this isn't magic. This is a dead kid. Yeah, and he's he's like fully beginning to recognize that. And his hand is still on on Esther's arm, as though to sort of encourage her to have some sort of restraint. Um, and he he goes um. Is is your mum and dad still here? They shrug. Both of them, at the same time. Uh, it's kind of eerie, um, but, you know, uh, everything about this right now is eerie. Um, uh, and uh, Thorn sort of wibbles out. I don't know. We, it's okay. We, we, we were here for so long and then we weren't. Oh... That sucks. Oh man. Yeah. Um, we're, I will say we're not here to hurt you. There's nothing to be afraid of. If I can make this, I know you aren't here to hurt us. Thing. Otherwise, you would have already done so. Ethan is like nodding enthusiastically. He's like, this kid knows. This kid knows their shit. Yeah, right. She's right. Her. Yeah, she's she's spitting facts, bro. Um, and um, he he goes uh. Did they ever did they ever say anything more about the monster? No. We weren't told anything. We were told to stay upstairs and be quiet. Um It wasn't Ethan... always like this. Oh no. When what did was things it like change? Before? I don't know. Um, Ethan is gonna take a second and he's gonna suck in a breath knowing that this is probably gonna be a difficult question um, and he's, he's, he's gonna go um, do, do you have a do you have a, a, a baby brother? Um Rose uh, her her brow sort of knit and she goes if we ever had one, I don't know. I think we might have. Weird... It's a uh... weird way to reply to that question. Yeah, Play that like one on the floor. Very much a yes or no when you <laughs> Um, it. and uh, and, and Thorn Thorn just sort of goes. I mean, I I th- I think we did. I m- mummy didn't really mention much. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't know if that was uh I'm I'm sorry. And he just sort of no, like you're okay. No, if that shakes thank, his head. Thank you for telling us. Uh, yeah, Genuinely. no. True, true. Uh, this is uh and he like if Anne wanted to say this is horrifying but stopped himself before he could. Um because again his brain was like children. There are children in this room and they are dead but they are still children. Um but he looks at Ashka and uh, there is absolutely like an inclination that this baby. Mm mm. Mm mm. I think, like, uh. Ethan is beginning to think that this baby was. Well, you know, he's been thinking it for a hot second, but now he, he is almost certain that this baby was a trap. Um. And he doesn't think that there's a baby in this house. There's been no crying. Uh. There has been no movement. These kids don't know of a baby in the house right now, but their doubles outside did. It seems as though somebody has tried to trap them in here, in Ethan's in, in, in his brain. And uh, he's beginning to think that coming upstairs was a problem, and they should just go down and deal with whatever fucking monster was in the basement. Okay. Um, so out of curiosity, what is the play here? Um... 
Ashka still has questions, so I'll be yeah. there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, keep asking. Don't don't yeah. don't listen to me. Continue but, but to she's ask. Like, she sees that like Thorn's nervous and, and she sees that Rose is abrasive. Um and she sort of like crouches down and, and she's like I want to talk to you more if you don't mind, but I don't want to I don't want things to seem forced. I'd rather you to be comfortable. Uh what's your opinions on pets? They look kind of confused and they go, uh, what do you mean? So Ochka has this square side pouch that is so carefully protected and, and it, it's got like little holes on the side. Um, and carefully she flick she flicks it open. Uh, and the head of this like scrappy orange tabby cat missing an eye, little, little, pieces missing from his ears um but but very bright orange and clearly like maybe like like a year or two old um like like the head of this cat pops out and uh Farshoot gently hops out of the pouch with a little sort of whistle um yeah. uh, and she lets the cat approach the ghost I mean animals interact with ghosts they yeah with yeah 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 they absolutely can um so, uh, Rose sort of keeps her, her, um, her, like, stiff sort of, uh, actually, let me, let me bring up another picture to those of you who don't know what Rose and Thorn look like. Um, Rose sort of keeps her, like, stiff, uh, like, tall demeanor, um, but, uh, actually, Thorn jumps for a moment, uh, kind of hides back, and then kind of peeks out from behind, uh, the standing visage, ghostly visage of Rose. And he goes, hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. And, like, yeah. holds out his hand um, and, like, makes a little kind of sound. Um, and yeah, and uh, I, I, do you want to do you want to control your cat? You can control your cat if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Who role plays the animal here? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm as the DM, I, will, I normally I, I normally default to role playing the animals. But if you want to play your cat, you absolutely can. I, I will. I will play far shoot right now. Great, wonderful. I don't know if if you think it would be funny later on, you can. Hey, but, cool. But yeah, Farshu does um, perk up and approach, uh, sniff. It's kind of weird. There's nothing there, but there's also something there. Yeah. Um, but but Farshu uh sits in front of Thorn, uh, and and is just sort of watching. Yeah, Thorn will. Very, very tentatively. Sorry, I just got a DM from Cyrus saying, who plays the animals? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I, I didn't want to thank Cyrus. I didn't want to thank Cyrus either, but they were the one who sent the message, so it, if the shoe fits, my friend. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, he sort of, like, peers behind, and uh, he'll, like, reach his hand out, and for shoot, sort of, like, gets, like, he does a little head bump thing against him, yeah. and then he, like, imme- immediately just sort of plops down on the ground. Um, and then starts to pet the cat, even though, like, he sort of, his hand sort of phases through the cat, um, but yeah. he's, like, focusing really, really hard on trying to pet the cat. Oh. He is allowed. Oh. I, uh, Sun boy yeah. allowed. Esther pipes up, uh, seeing that Rose is still a little bit off put, I say. Oh. Uh, do, do you, do you want to feed him and i pull out the loose pheasant from <laughs> session zero has that been in your pocket this entire time <laughs> the whole time i've just had some loose pheasant for, uh, for context um there was a scene in session zero where sedona just made fucking esther ram like just loose roasted pheasant into her with a wor- with a with a with a two uh, like like a stealth roll of two. Yeah, evil two. So everyone was just watching her cram pheasant into the pockets of her trousers. Okie dokie. I just wanted it to be plot relevant. <laughs> Okie dokie. So are you wanting this ghost to feed the cat the roasted pheasant? I don't know how to interact with ghosts, much less children Do you ghosts. think the ghost will be able to hold on to the pheasant to feed the cat? I have made my help. 
<laughs> In Esther, my heart, I'm going no. to be completely honest. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't want you feeding my cat that if it's been in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, it's only been like two a days. day. No, um, it's only been like a day. <laughs> Rose, who hasn't had one emotion other than like this uppity sort of like I'm the older sibling sort of gaze, uh, kind of cracks a little bit. She she sort of snorts a little bit at that, <laughs> and then immediately like she realizes that she has to not be a kid, uh, and mm. like her face immediately goes back to what it was before. Oh, that's sad. Ashka lets herself laugh, actually. And she's like, no, you can laugh, it's funny. (laughs) Um, She is quite the idiot, isn't she? (laughs) (laughs) And then laughs at that. And then, like, out loud laughs at that. It's like, like, generally very stoic. You know, he's maybe cracked a spell, like, twice a thing. Once when he saw the library, and um, once when he detected thoughts... Uh, at the very beginning in Session Zero and realized that there was maybe something good that he regrets this now, coming out of that guy's head. Uh, but he laughs out loud at this um, and, like, gives Esther's arm a little squeeze as though to, like, make her crack a smile too. Like, this is all lighthearted. Yeah. Yeah. He He's using an IRL tone indicator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you see magical text that says slash J. <laughs> <laughs> slash LH. <laughs> um I like force a little smile out just to just to match <laughs> the energy in the room. So um you did have a couple more questions to ask, yeah, Ashka? Yeah. What uh, would those be? So as as hopefully the vibes are coming down, uh she she's going she's going to just casually ask, uh before you were locked up in here, did your parents ever talk about a man named Strahd? Um, they shake their head. They go, I don't know. Sounds like a stupid name anyway. And, uh, uh Thorn, who's does. like, who's like very, very, like, focused on petting this cat, goes, <laughs> 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 Nice! He opens up. God, I am melting. It's God. very sweet. <laughs> Um, oh, you go. No, it's okay. I was just, I was just, you know, composure. Please continue. Ethan has nothing <laughs> worthwhile to say. He's just like, wow, cat. Everyone is just looking at the cat. Wow, cat. Um, I was just like, well, what about, say, a crest or symbol with a tower and a raven? No. Anything, nope. any, anything that, um, um, sorry, uh, a- anything that the mon- that has to do with the monster, I-, I don't think that we know. We were just told to stay upstairs. Is Strahd the monster? Oh my fucking god. Um, okay. Uh, Ethan goes, um, is it your family that has the windmill? He ke- tries to keep his tone light. Uh, you know, in spite of the dead kids. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, and he goes, um... <laughs> Desperately, like, looking at you, you're asking questions that are just not fucking here. Good questions, um, to be fair, but I'm like... <laughs> um, and... Good. So, so he just, he gives a little nod uh, light and he's like, "This is a lovely house. Is there an- another floor up there? Uh, is it just upstairs and in- in- in the basement?" This is the upstairs. You're in the attic right now. Uh, oh, and then, you're, um, you're you're completely correct. That sorry, I'm, I'm Rose, stupid. R- Rose goes, "Yes, you are," and then points to the um, the dollhouse and she goes, "My dollhouse has everything." Um, that is, and then she points over, uh, to where the, you can see, like, the secret door that was in the, um, the attic, uh, the, the, um, through the dollhouse. Um, Rose, uh, Rose goes, uh, there's a secret door right there. Uh, and that's the one that leads all the way down to the very bottom, uh, to the dungeon. I think we have to go down that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if yeah. these kids are going to give us anything else. Mm. And honestly, like, I... I think that the best thing that we have done in coming up here 
is maybe making them feel as though they're not being persecuted. Yeah. Which is, to be fair, good. Yeah, no, like, absolutely. Um, I think that making them feel maybe a little bit more at home in a place that they're trapped in was was okay of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be trapped here, though. Uh, I, 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 if I'm... Ethan yeah. does not know the rules of life and death. He is just like, well, they're dead. They died um, here, so this is it. Oh, fuckers. Asuka does. Um, like, like she, she's still, like, trying to be relaxed, like, letting them so, sort of relaxed, but she's like, do you still want to leave here? Like, move on? Um... Rose frowns, um, and goes, I don't know. Why are you asking me this question? Why are you even here? Oh. Um, and, uh, Thorn, sensing that Rose had, is, is on edge, immediately gets it from the cat and stands right next to, um, next to Rose and takes one arm and hugs her very closely. Uh, uh and, and Asuka's trying her best to keep a smile and she's like, it's okay, um, they were these two children that we believe were you, but clearly aren't. Uh, they told us that there was a baby on the third floor and a monster in the basement, and that your parents are keeping a monster in the basement. So we came in to get the child on the third floor. There is no our... baby on the third floor. <gasps> oh, I fucking mm. knew it! Fuck! I'm Fuck. not quite sure why we're here then. Uh, Ethan looks at Ashka and goes, it was. Say that again, Mutt. It was a trap. Well, then they chose There is the wrong no fridge! I lied! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I've been oh, thinking about that this entire so time. <laughs> <laughs> you want the truth? <laughs> <sighs> um. Ethan says this knowingly, by the way, as though he's been holding it in. Uh, and he knew that Ashka would not believe it because the way that Ashka is, she would have pursued this baby until she physically, like, watched it turn to dust like the books in her hands. Like, that's just how it be. Um, that was a solid line. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, he knew this. He knew this from from the moment that they they hit that floor with the skulls leading up. Like, that he had this horrible sinking feeling. That it was a trap. Uh, so he's been ready to say this while. Uh, but he doesn't mean it in a he doesn't mean to say it in a horrible way. He means to say it in a fucking like, we're fucked, let's go downstairs kind of way. Um because there's nothing that he believes they can do here that will fix this. These kids are here, that's it. Like they just um. need to deal with this house. And it's kind of funny, because he says that, and, and you'd think it'd be demoralizing, but Ashka smiles. Um, <laughs> more genuine than the one that she's been keeping for the kids. Uh, and she looks at Ethan and just says, They clearly chose the wrong people to trap in this house, then. <laughs> uh, Ethan would laugh. If he wasn't so fucking scared of this place. Um, he doesn't feel strong. Uh, he feels as though he is just barely clinging on to stuff. Uh, and he, instead of laughing, just sort of goes, Hmm. Um, and motions towards the door, uh, sort of wordlessly, because he's, pres he's presuming that Ashka knows that they have to move. You know, they can't stay here. What's really funny, you had mentioned that Ethan said he's not strong, but doesn't our strength come from the very moments that we are hanging on for our very last seconds? Isn't that what strength is? Impressive feats of, of battle and wit 
um, of, of merit pale in comparison to the very last seconds whenever you know that you're holding on and you just continue to do so. That having been said, you make your way to the secret stairs. <laughs>